The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today I'm on the Monte Carlo MC5, and I'm going to conduct a full sea trial. Now, of course, when we're getting ready to get underway, one of the first things we have to do are the daily engine checks. And the MC5 is under a hatch right in the cockpit. Well, the stairs lead us directly in between the two engines, so the daily engine checks are going to be easy. The engines are connected to the pods by jack shafts, so the pods are located in the lazarette. Now let's take a look at the side decks. The rails come up plenty high, but I'd like to see a grab handle here just to ease the transition up. Another rail is along the side of the flying bridge, and at this point, the rails come up 29 inches, and you've got 19 inches of space on the side deck, and notice this low point on the deck will allow water to run out the side. And now, let's take a look at the ground tackle. I've got hatches to both sides of the Lumar windlass, chain running out to a plow anchor, and a stainless steel anchor roller bolted onto the bow. We've got an open bow rail so we can have the boat bow into the dock, and this will give us a convenient step. The hatches will give us easy access to the all chain road. There's a remote control for the windlass here, as well as a control at the helm. Let's check out the boat's three control stations, starting with the lower helm. Well, we start with a pair of 15-inch Simrad displays, twin-engine displays to either side, rudder angle indicator in the center, compass just above, directly in line with the helm station. At the lower panel, the Volvo Penta EVC display and the control for the Simrad displays. To the right-hand side, starts with a chain counter for the ground tackle. Just below, trim tab controls with LED indicators to the sides, digital engine controls, and the IPS joystick. The VHF radio is mounted low to the side panel. I can't see what channel it's on, plus I end up hitting it with my leg and changing channels inadvertently. I'd rather see it mounted a little higher. Let's talk about visibility. I love it and I don't like it a little bit. What I love, this single piece windshield, it's huge, great for visibility, but to the sides, big thick window bullions creating a blind spot. Plus looking out the side, the overhead comes down very low. So to get a view out the side, you've got to duck down. But what I do love, these opening side windows makes it great for when you're coming into the dock. The design team at Monte Carlo also added a conveniently located grab handle that's not only good for the stairway going down below, but also for adding security at the helm. Now let's take a look at the flying bridge helm access from stairs to the starboard side of the cockpit. Well, the helm is located over to the starboard side. Same non-glare dash that we had down below. Tachometers to either side of the compass. Single Simrad display over to the left-hand side. The Volvo Penta EVC displays, one, two, three of them. The seat is exceedingly comfortable, swivels and slides. I needed it slid all the way to the back so that I could run the boat standing up. I also needed the wheel forward and it fell right to my fingertips. One of my favorite features of digital controllability is multiple control stations. And here on the MC5, there's one right in the cockpit. Now let's take a look at how she performed. With the twin Volvo Penta IPS 600s powering our test boat, we reached the top speed at 3600 RPM of 30 knots even. At that speed, she was burning 42.5 gallons per hour, giving us a range of 219 nautical miles. Best cruise was found to be at 3250 RPM and 25.7 knots. That speed reduced the fuel burn to 31.5 gallons per hour for a range of 253 miles. That will easily get us between fueling marinas on our way up to Alaska or around the Mediterranean. She carries an EC B rating for 14 people, which means that the MC5 is designed for use with up to 14 people aboard in offshore conditions up to and including wind force 8. Her ride is exceedingly comfortable with her sharp entry cutting cleanly through waves and crossing wakes produce no pounding or harsh effects. In turns, she leans 10 degrees remaining comfortable throughout. It was a shame that we didn't have harsh conditions during our test, but it's easy to see how well she would handle and how she's earned that Class B rating. That joystick made for one of the easiest boats to maneuver around the dock. Small pulses of the controls had us gliding alongside the dock with just a gentle layup. Backing her into a slip was just as easy and effortless. Truly, anyone could do it, and it just takes a gentle touch on the controls. And that is my sea trial of the Monte Carlo MC5. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.